How to rebuild a vintage steam toy, part 7. Working on the flywheel and commencing reassembly. I nearly said commencing countdown engines on. For what reason, I don't know. Starting with the flywheel, I'm cleaning off the surplus JB weld. Just leaving some JB weld in the crack that I filed in the flywheel spoke that was broken. I also put some JB weld in the blowholes around the perimeter of the flywheel. And in this clip, the flywheel is in the three-jaw chuck in the Boxford lathe. And if you look where the chuck jaws meet the flywheel, there's not very much to get hold of, and the flywheel's not running very true. But it doesn't matter, it's held in place securely by the tailstock centre, and I'm only using some emery cloth to remove the surplus JB weld. I did all the machining that I needed to do on the flywheel in a previous episode, while it still had the centre part that I fitted to it sticking out of the back so I could hold it properly in the chuck. The flywheel's still not perfect, but it's looking much better. No more machine work on the flywheel, it's all handwork from now on. There's not really that much to do. As I mentioned earlier, all I'm doing is removing the surplus JB weld, leaving enough in the groove that I filed in the flywheel. There's a bit more filling to do that I will do at the end of the episode, once the etch primer has dried. In this clip, I'm using Phoenix Precision Paints etch primer, Firstly, the etch primer will stick to the metal, giving a really good base for a top coat. But it will also show me the imperfections around the repaired spoke, and I will fill the imperfections with some ultra-fine filler later on in the episode. I find this is the best way to do it. Always put some paint on a component, and then all the imperfections really show up, because when it's a rough casting, you can't really see it very clearly. It looks okay. I mean, it's not bad, but you can clearly see a bit of a depression around the damaged spoke. Back inside the main workshop, I fitted the mounting bracket to the firebox. And not unsurprisingly, as I mentioned in the previous episode, the bearings don't line up. But with a bit of gentle bending of the bracket using my Barco spanner, now they do, so I can fit the cylinder. The cylinder is attached to the bracket with two very small bolts with washers. And in this clip, I'm fitting the piston valve. In this magnified view, I'm fitting the crankshaft and you can see exactly how it works once it's in position. And if you study this clip very carefully, you will see how the slip eccentric valve gear works. I can't run the engine because the flywheel's not fitted, but I can test that it has function. Well, something is happening. I'll test it properly when I fit the flywheel. Time to oil the essential parts. Now I need to make a spacer to fit on the end of the crankshaft so that the flywheel has something to locate against. First of all, I made a simple brass sleeve, but when I looked at it, it didn't look very good. So I made another one that's a fancy shape, so it looks a lot better. I could have lived with the plain one, but I prefer this one. Now I have to make the spacer that goes between the bearings. In the chuck, I fitted a piece of brass which is 3 eighths of an inch in diameter I faced across the front of it, and now I'm using a centre drill, immediately followed by a twist drill, to drill down the middle of this. I'm drilling the hole, 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, with a twist drill, which means it isn't going to be a tight fit on the shaft. All this part needs to be is a spacer, just to stop the bearings from moving inboard on the crankshaft if they come loose from the mounting bracket. I'm using a twist drill to drill the hole down the middle, because this isn't a precision part. Normally, I would drill a part like this 11 64ths of an inch, which is one imperial drill size under 3 16ths. Then I would use a reamer. But the only 3 16ths reamer that I have is a bit short, because I accidentally broke it many years ago. I reground the end, and it works fine. This next part is important. This item has to have some float. If you make it a dead fit, then what's going to happen as the steam engine warms up, all the metal is going to expand, so it's a good idea to leave a little bit of clearance to allow this to happen without anything binding. And once again, to match the other spacer that I made, I've machined this to a much nicer shape, and when it's fitted in position, it looks okay. It's a loose fit on the crankshaft, and that's on purpose, because what's going to happen is Oil is going to run down the centre of this, that will align it, and just hold some oil in the vicinity of the bearings all the time. This stuff is known as cellulose stopper. Sometimes it is called knifing putty, and it's a very fine filler. My normal procedure when filling model parts is to use car body filler, 
Rub that down and then follow it up with some cellulose stopper like this. I will be rubbing this down with some much finer grade wet or dry sandpaper. In the case of this flywheel, I didn't use car body filler in the first place, I used JB Weld because I needed it to repair the crack in the spoke. I need to leave this for quite a long time for it to harden, then I'll rub it down and paint the flywheel. And before anybody comments, yes I am aware that this is not the original flywheel for this engine, it's miles too big. This is the flywheel that was on the engine when I received it, and this is the flywheel that will be fitted when I hand the engine back to the owner. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.